Luca De La Torre is shooting up the depth chart of my heart, and I think it's the same for a lot of you guys as US Men's National Team fans. After doing the deep dive of this, he is probably one of the most difficult players that I've ever scouted, and we'll get to the reason why a bit later in this video. Hey everyone, I am Jake and I'm the host of FIFA America. I am a USSF licensed coach and I'm currently living in London, England, pursuing my UEFA coaching licenses. I love to break down players and coaching strategies, especially as it relates to the US men's national team. So let's today break down Luca De La Torre. So Luca is showing off and showing out having man of the match performances for the US men's national team and Heracles. And yet he hasn't been involved in the US men's national team picture for the last few months. Now tell me down below in the comments what you think of Luca De La Torre, and we'll see if it matches my assessment here. Now while he's only 23 still, he feels like he's been around for a really long time, so let's quickly just talk about his history. He grew up in San Diego, California, and spent a lot of time at the Bradenton Academy for the US Men's National Team, which is their old home that was in Florida. He was scouted by Fulham in one of the US tournaments and he moved there in 2013. When he was in Fulham's academy, he played mostly as a winger, and you can kind of see those skill sets come out when he plays now. The half turns, the speed, the skills, all of that comes from training as a winger in Fulham's academy. Now he is on record saying that at Fulham, when they're trying to stay up in the Premier League, they can easily just buy a player that plays your position instead of bringing someone up from the academy because it's less risky. So after not getting the opportunities that he wanted to at Fulham, at 22, he moved to Heracles Almeida in the Dutch Eredivisie. It's a mid-table Dutch team that has usually finished in 7th or 8th or 9th over the last few years. And one of the biggest changes for him moving to Heracles was that he moved from a winger position to a true number 8 center midfielder. Fans of the US men's national team have been watching Luca de la Torre in the Dutch Eredivisie, and they have been begging Greg to give him a chance but he hasn't gotten called in. And even in the last window was maybe a last minute inclusion because of Gianluca Busio's positive COVID test. Now here's where things get really weird when scouting Luca De La Torre. Some of my favorite things about him are things that don't show up in the numbers. On one side of Luka fans, there will be people saying he reminds them of Luka Modric or someone like Ivan Rakitic, someone that's getting as many touches as possible and leading his team in passes all over the pitch, trying to push them forward. Now on the other side of the spectrum, the haters of Luka De La Torre will say that he has zero goals and zero assists, and in a funky way, both sides are right. In his most recent press conference after winning Man of the Match for the US Men's National Team against Honduras, he gave this answer. Personally, I feel like I deserved that opportunity for a long time. Um, been in good form for my club, and every time I got the chance with the national team in those substitute appearances, I felt I did well. So today I just did my best, and then it's, yeah, it's the manager's decision. But I'm happy with the way I played, so I can live with whatever happens after that. To me, I really don't think that was an indictment of Greg Berhalter, but actually a complete and utter belief in Luca De La Torre and himself. That is the type of player that I want in my team, but doesn't necessarily show up in the stats. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far or learned something new, we are going for 5,000 subscribers before the March qualifiers, so why not hit that sub button below and help us towards our goal? Let's talk about things that I love about Luca De La Torre. The first thing, and again, this is not going to show up on any statistical value, but his intensity. He is one of the most intense people I've seen on the US men's national team, and it doesn't just come out in his play on the field, but also in his press conferences and interviews. What does happen though is that he has such an aggression about him, and I love that when he makes tackles, it's always fair. He's not trying to hurt the other player, but you just feel like this is a player that wants to destroy everything that's in his path to get to what he wants, which is to help his team win. Yota holds it in on the outside. Hold it though, Figueroa resets for Elise. Figueroa. Lost the handle. Good work by Luca De La Torre. No, the whistle does go for Beat the offside trap. Cannons crossed. Stamped away by Maldonado. De La Torre wins it back with Kellen Acosta. This guy's getting in and joining. He said, yes, we understand the work, the seriousness of these games. But when we're playing at our best, it's when the mood is good as Figueroa's clearance is knocked out of Torre. You know, 
let's not forget. I think I think at that point and at this point of the game, and I'm sure a few beverages that not feeling much. <laughs> Well, Rochez on the other end just dribbles it out of play to the way Lozano's there in front of Acosta Little chip forward for Elise Now the corner it goes And a return got knocked away good work by Del Torre He's had a good game to defend Torre that's way in now way in trying to dribble through the double team and couldn't do so Wins it back. That I really don't think is something that we see on the U.S. men's national team very much. And that is one of the most beneficial reasons for bringing Luca De La Torre along in the 23. He does have relentless positive motion. And every time he got the ball for the U.S. and for Heracles, he's trying to build up and move the team forward. He's currently eighth in the entire division in the Dutch league in progressive runs. And you could see him do that for the U.S. men's national team against Honduras. I mean, just look at his heat map. He is everywhere on the field, dropping deep, trying to build out, trying to move the team forward, trying to make tackles, trying to make a positive contribution to his team. The other thing that we talk about a lot for the U.S. and why some players aren't called, another player that has a great name, a very fun name to say, is Conrad De La Fuente. Now we talk about how a coach would much rather bring along a player that gives a 7 out of 10 performance every game rather than an 8 sometimes and a 4 other times. Well, Luca De La Torre is the embodiment of consistency. If a coach is looking for someone that gives a 7 out of 10 each game, look no further than Luca. So with all that being said, there actually are some points of his game that I would love to see improve. And honestly, just being objective here for any fan, zero goals and zero assists in over 20 appearances for his club team this season as a number eight or attacking player is not enough production to warrant an automatic starting spot for the u.s men's national team part of that production zero goals right in over 20 appearances is due to his shooting and i'm not talking about his power or anything like that here but actually that most of his shots that he makes space for himself are directly at the keeper in the middle of the goal so for him, I would actually work on the placement of his shot first and then work on power. He uses his speed, he uses his dribbling, he uses his ability to get into dangerous positions to make the shot. But then when he does shoot, it's almost always directly at the goalkeeper. Now the last piece I'll touch on is really just me nitpicking on Luca De La Torre, but it is something that can really improve his game a lot, which is the weight of the pass and being able to lead players in stride. Now I'm going to compare this to someone like Giovanni Reina, who when he makes a pass is to a player exactly in stride on their strong foot, or it's in the space that he wants the player to go. Or for someone like Luca De La Torre in the US game, he was actually passing to the player's body. So when Timothy Weah or Reggie Cannon or whoever was on the right side was moving into space, he kind of slowed down the play because he was passing to where he saw them and not where he wanted them to be. And I think that's such a small difference that Luca De La Torre can make that can make a really big difference in his play. And if we're talking about his shooting needing work in terms of placement and that producing more goals for him, then I really think the weight of the pass and being able to lead players into the box and into dangerous positions can improve that production in the assists. So guys, I do use a service called Scout to do all of the scouting. I have PDF reports, I have clips, and that's where I gather everything. So what I've done for you guys is if you do want to see the full scouting report PDF and all the information that I used in the scouting report, 
and support the channel at the same time, you can make sure to check out the Patreon. Not seen on YouTube videos, the PDF reports, behind the scenes, everything, cat pictures, all of that can be found on Patreon and you're supporting the channel at the same time. That is freaking value, guys. Okay, so where do we stand with Luca De La Torre and what do we expect from him in the near future? Well, for me, if he can consistently be a top three player on an average Dutch team, that to me tells me he can play a pivotal role in being a depth piece for the U.S. men's national team. I think he can be a great spot starter like he was for Honduras, and I think he's the player that most embodies a Yunus Musa backup. Now we can argue back and forth if he should be in the starting 11 or not, but I think for me it's very easy to say that he should easily be a part of this 23 going forward. And to summarize his scouting report, he passes every eye test possible, but he does fail some statistical tests. For me though, what he brings to the team for the US men's national team is just a raw competitiveness, someone that wants to just obliterate everything that's in front of him wants to destroy as soon as he steps on the pitch the intensity that he brings to this team i really think is unparalleled for any other player in this u.s men's national team pool he is someone that is serious in his quest to be the best player on the field every time he steps on and that's something that we don't necessarily have with our starting 11. <music>